Hello and welcome back to Borderlands 2. This is part 13, and in this part, we finally make it to Sanctuary after satisfying the rather narrative-specific requirements, killing 20 bloodshots and watching Corporal Reese fucking pass away right before our very eyes. Because he got ambushed by a bunch of psychos and some racks. He looks honestly, he looked like he had just got caught by the Droogies from a Clockwork Orange. They were beating the crap out of him on the ground and just kicking him. And that's a reference I actually remember because we just uh, did the uh, Tenacia D commentary recently. <laughs> yep, and that happens too. And in that case, Jack, Jack, Jack Black, honestly, he is a good substitute for, for a homeless guy who gets picked in, Rare weapon. in alley and starts getting crap beaten out of him because he also was singing. And it was terrible. <laughs> so the shooting machine gun is that just got a uh, faster fire rate on it. All of the uh, in, in comparison to other machine guns. Well, I've yet to see a, a machine gun type that doesn't have a warm up cycle first. Maybe that's the core difference between assault rifles and SMGs. Is that SMGs are immediately full auto, but assault rifles have to already have been shooting for a little while before they're actually full auto. There's a chassis over there. Unfortunately, we cannot salvage the chassis in order to attempt to make the... What is it? I can't remember what Max's car is in Carmageddon. I know it's I know it's something Eagle. Damn it. But I don't remember what it's actually called. Hmm. Maybe it's just called the Eagle? I don't think so, though. No, but I'm going to have to put Carmageddon on my to-do list. That sounds like a lot of fun. Carmageddon 2 is specifically is really good. Carmageddon 1's not so great, but um, it's still it's still uh, it, it's still relatively fun. Um, I would recommend that if you're gonna play Carmageddon solo, go for Carmageddon 2. The campaign for Carmageddon 2, although it has some pretty stupid missions that you gotta do, uh, everything else in it actually uh, plays very nicely. Okay, now here's a little brain buster for you because. Right before us is another sequel game whose predecessor left much to be desired, which the sequel answered. How many, how many games can you think of where the first game was just kind of okay, but the second game was fucking ma a masterstroke? Uh, several, but usually the uh, usually the reason is because they uh, drastically shift the genres for it. For example, Digimon World One fucking blows. Everyone loves, uh, everyone but me fucking loves the game, but I hate the thing because. I actually went out and down, and, and uh, printed out the uh, g the uh, game flax like 200 fucking page FAQ for the, for the fucking thing, and I still never beat the damn thing. But Digimon World One is so goddamn grindy that it, it just takes a shitload of, of the fun out of you know being a a a a pet a, 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 a simulator. Now Digimon World Two I actually really enjoy despite it having. Um, despite it being a, uh, a very gr a very grindy uh, RPG, mostly because it's uh, I feel it's actually more of a monster tamer as opposed to a V-Pet sim. And to be perfectly honest, I do not like V-Pet sims all that all that much. I like V-Pet sim elements, but I actually prefer monster tamers as opposed to a v as opposed to V-Pets. So Dig so Digimon World 2 is significantly more fun to me in comparison to, to Digimon World uh, 1. Is just you're going to grind and, and attempt to get an ultimate level Digimon after five fucking years, and that's years in game time. But it feels like uh, it feels like IRL time actually. <laughs> Reminds me of Oblivion Syndrome. The calendar days actually make me feel like, my God, how many days have I been at this? I was going to say that a couple games come to mind where the first game was okay, but the second game was awesome. Crash Bandicoot being one because the second game looked better and it also gave you a slide jump. Uh, I also was going to say Paper Mario because Paper Mario, although a great game in its own right, was way too slow at the beginning and they sped it up immediately in Paper Mario 2 by immediately giving you action commands that let you do extra damage during the fight to, in order to speed up fights. 
I will grant that that was one of the big things that kept me away from uh, Paper Mario. Paper Mario One had a really goddamn slow beginning, but I've never. But because of that ridiculously slow beginning, I've never gotten all that all that far into Paper Mario One, and I've never actually played Thousand Year Door. To play, definitely, definitely play start and finish Thousand Year Door. It will take fucking forever because Thousand Year Door that's like a sixty hour game, um, but it's. It has everything that Paper Mario has, and even more, because it also has much, many more memorable music tracks that bring me back every time. Although, I must admit that the six boss theme from Paper Mario 1 will always be near and dear to my heart. My also cloudy, squishy heart. We are still raiding the psycho base. We are raiding corpses. We need your corpses. We need six more. Or more. If it just now, so the happens, optional, too what, many. What is the optional objective to uh, going to reward us this time around? There is no optional objective. Actually, wait, no. The, the, is it the... It could just be that the bloodshots are actually, in fact, blocking us. Hence... There's a plus in case we kill too many of them, but albeit it is necessary on the way to contacting Lieutenant Davis. Although I think no, Lieutenant Davis is okay. We're we're definitely out here for something. The killing bloodshots is one of the things. It's hard. It's kind of hard for Pass Cloud to distinguish between optional and main objectives. Optional objectives are highlighted as blue. But but so is the Road to Sanctuary quest. Behold. No, the Road to Sanctuary quest is uh, is uh, 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 the text for the uh, for the Road to Sanctuary uh, is the title of the quest that we're on. But below that we have our list of objectives. White are mandatory objectives for the quest that we're on. Blue are optional objectives for the quest that we're on. Two to go. Dang it! No madass tokens. I'm angry. One more. There he is. And for doing this... Yeah, but he's clipping into the wall. Goddamn clippers. Resistance lost a good man. There you go. But I'm sure Reese would have been happy to know how quickly you wiped out those blood shots. Okay, so that, that right, might so have done now... a thing. So yeah, the optional objective here was just getting revenge into Reese. All right. Yeah, because he said something like, "Please, kick some ass for Reese. For Reese. We knew him so well. He was on screen for a total of two seconds." Although I'm pretty sure now we can leave because uh, uh, we've got the power core. So yeah, we can bail. Yeah. So, you know what killing the bloodshots does? It makes this area safer to explore so you can loot the treasure. Ah, uh, but you've already looted the majority of the treasure. You got the super chest up top. Then we no uh, longer have another, business here. another significant chest on the bottom, then there's no reason for us to be here anymore. It, it kind of, this game, and I'm sure it's based on a classic treasure hunting formula, is that the, the hardest to reach places in the dungeon slash lair slash cliffside slash camp usually contain the rarest items. So there probably is a main chest around here somewhere. Well, we've already been there. And we already opened it, precisely. So now, moving on, after I rid myself of my fixation on red dot in corner of map, which disappeared due to blo uh, broken aggro, now we might be able to move on. Towards our actual objective, that sanctuary. It's nope. You're still <laughs> looting the base. Okay. Kill them. Kill all of them. I mean, it's a looter shooter, so you're supposed to be looting the base. I got but the a same loot. point. Ooh, is that a shield? A no, it's another weapon. When it's highlighted a in red, hand cannon. it means that your level is too high. And you know what I end up doing with those is I end up selling them because if they're not immediately useful to me, then they are garbage. <laughs> Overpriced, uh, overpowered garbage. But come on, it's a hand cannon. You know how much explosive damage a hand cannon can do. Yeah, but hand cannons consume their own ammo type. Kind of. 
Oh, this I suppose is not as big a deal when you're playing as the fucking Gunzerker. Shady. Okay, I think I think everybody's dead. So Pass Cloud needs now that he has shoot, he must loot. Ah, uh, but we've already looted the majority of the base. There must be more things to loot. There. Token. Okay, there's your badass token. Gun damage. Uh, gun damage. That's an easy one, gun damage. 0.6%. Yay! Fuck yeah. Which is, I think that puts us up to uh, plus 1.3%, which once we actually start doing hundreds of gun damage, will matter. Fuck yeah. Not to mention totals. Like when you shoot 11 slugs at once. Stronghold of the resistance. Pandora, as you knew it, the chaos, the bandits, that time has passed. If you let it, this could be an era of order. Please, just turn yourselves in, and I promise, your deaths will be quick. Well, that doesn't sound like a good I bargain at all. Hey, you like my speech? I was lying about the last part, by the way. I'm gonna spend a long time torturing you bandit scum to death, and I'll enjoy it even more because... Ruin, is that you? Oh, it's the vault hunter. Damn it. I wanted to hear what Handsome Jack had to say. Handsome Jack is Nincompoop, who may be final boss. Much more wow, interesting than what? Tentacle Monster. Ah. Uh, sanctuary. We made it, Gerdat. But Roland is left Sanctuary. Why? Because plot. <laughs> made it to Banditville, huh? Well done. It'll be nice to see a friendly face when I'm burning that place to the ground. <laughs> oh, and I have decided that I will tell you my secret later on. Once you've earned it. Hello. You're the hey, Lieutenant Davis. Was talking about. The one who faced Jack and lived. Kind of. We need your help. That that was but that was imposter first. Jack, Blood not real Jack. The shield generator. So why does this guy look like he's from the uh Shit, what is that Fall series? Out. There there was a third person there was a third person shooter series from the PS2 to uh, to uh, PS4. Killzone, that's what it was. Why does he look like the cover uh, why does this helmet look like the guy from Killzone? Because this game is not afraid to resemble anything from folklore, media, movies, music, television, and other video games especially. Good. That ought to last us a day or two. Roland was supposed to bring us some intel on how to stop Jack. Chapter five. With him missing, we really need your help. Talk to Private Jessup at the gate. He'll let you enter the city. Jessup, stand up straight. We got a vault hunter. No, no, no. Hold on, everybody. Just b before you go barging in, I just want you to know that I'm just stipulating the cautionary tale. You're not gonna actually see the cinematic thing that's happening, uh, past Cloud. What cinematic thing? The base is being bombarded by Lunar Morbors, and you're ignoring it. Was that before or after Man started talking? Uh, during. Well, I find that it's impolite to not watch somebody while they're talking. Unless, of course, I'm doing something. Like cleaning the dishes. Sanctuary. Built on the ruins of the Dahl Corporation's finest interplanetary mining ship. Hey, Jessup. Oh, crap. Is it Hyperion? I heard all of you were robots and you eat metal out the garbage and stuff. Knew you wired death machines be come for me once Roland went missing. Now, if you're here to kill me, you should probably know. <laughs> You'll never take me alive, you robotic son bitch! <laughs> Scooter! Come catch oh, a okay. Wait a minute. Huh? Well, hang me upside down from a telephone pole, cover me in honey, and lead me to a slow death at the hands of hungry spider ants. <laughs> you ain't no Hyperion robot. You're a vile hunter, huh? That's like a unicorn. Yeah, I'm rare. Uh, now, sure. Are you gonna help us out with this rolling situation? I heard them Crimson Raider dudes talking about Town mechanic. Have more respect for Scooter, goddammit. He is one of my favorite characters. 
plan, turn this city into a floating ass fortress of airborne awesomeness. Ha <laughs> ha. B. I, I got some fuel cells around here. You'll need those. Oh, and you'll need this uh, iridium here too. And in the next part, we are going to help man who hands giant bar of pink candy. Yay!